lighting can make or break your game and unity gives us a ton of controls in the lighting window and in the project settings in this video i'll walk you through every major setting that you need to know shout out to scorpion for suggesting this video on our discord server all right let's start to open the lighting settings press ctrl and 9 on the keyboard okay this will open up a window like this you can also go to window rendering and lighting but i recommend you to get used to the shortcut ctrl and 9 okay now the lighting settings contains five different sections in this video we'll focus more on scene and environment let's start with the scene settings we first need to specify a lighting settings asset and i recommend creating a new folder called lighting and you can create one by right clicking create rendering lighting settings okay or you can hit new and it will create a lighting settings asset in the selected folder let's call this level settings you can reuse the same settings for multiple scenes in your game that is completely fine and by default it is going to show the settings of the current active scene if you have multiple scenes loaded let's drag in this main menu scene as well you have now multiple scenes loaded additively in this case if you want to show the main menu scene settings you can right click and set it as the active scene and the lighting settings will change i'm going to go back and then remove this scene cool next step is real-time lighting if you use real-time lights in your game then you need to enable this thing then it will generate real-time light maps which is this section over here and this will provide real-time global illumination for the static objects in our game then real-time environment lighting is a boolean this specifies all of the ambient lighting in the scene this option can only be enabled if both baked global illumination and real-time global illumination are enabled okay and finally we have indirect resolution this decides the resolution on the light maps for objects that are hit by indirect lights okay i recommend experimenting with this there's no other fixed number that you should choose but baked global illumination is the big one here this means unity will bake indirect lighting into the textures based on the lighting mode shadow mask is the best quality it gives you dynamic shadows up close and baked shadows far away subtractive is more cheaper but only supports one main directional light this is great for mobile when baked indirect is enabled only the indirect or bounced lighting is baked into the textures direct lighting is kept real time you'll get the softness of baked gi without losing the responsiveness of real time lights shadow mask will give you quality subtractive is performant and it's best for mobile if you're still confused i have a better video here that talks a lot more about when to use real time lighting or mixed lighting please do check it out next let's get on to the light mapping settings which will decide the light maps that we bake once we start baking first of all light mapper choose progressive gpu if you have a really good gpu and once you change into that the gpu baking device will be shown you just need to hit on generate lighting once then it will show you the current gpu baking device okay if you don't have a good gpu choose cpu now important sampling if you're having a low frequency lighting setting maybe it's just a dungeon which is lightly lit or something like that you can try disabling important sampling because that will reduce noise important sampling is great for very well lit environments the next step is samples these are simply the number of ray casts and it's very simple higher means slower but better quality lower means faster baking but lower quality visuals and it's all priority okay start with the default and then go up and down based on how you want your lighting to be an important setting is uh, max bounces i recommend setting it to two uh, just keep in mind max bounces set to two you'll have two different bounces for bounced lighting if you want more you can change this value here it gives you good quality unless you really need realism then go for higher values but it will significantly increase bake time for filtering we have none auto and advanced i recommend setting it to auto none simply means there will be no filtering which means it is prone to noise if you set it to advanced you have even more control of how denoising is applied 
denoising for direct lights, indirect lights and ambient occlusion if it is enabled. This is a lot more advanced. I recommend setting it to auto when you are starting out. Light map resolution. This controls how many pixels per unit are there for the light maps. Currently it is 40 pixels per unit. Low resolution means things will be blurry, shadows will be blurry. High resolution will be sharper but it is going to be heavier. Start with 1. Start with 1. Generate lighting. Then you will know if there is any errors with the way you set things up. Then change to 10 and then bake again and see if it is good enough. Then you gradually increase the resolution and find a value for yourself. There is no right answer. So prioritize higher resolutions on scenes where you need much more quality lighting. Perhaps an interior scene or something like that. Max light map size is the maximum size of each light map texture. These ones here. 1024 is good enough. If you want more resolution, you can change it. But I recommend keeping it to 1024. It is pretty decent. Next important one is light map compression. This will save memory and there will only be a small quality loss. You can disable compression, but it will be much more bigger in size, but you won't have that quality loss. I recommend keeping it high quality. It's really, really good. Ambient occlusion adds baked ambient occlusion to your light maps. If you enable it, you can change the values. You shouldn't crank it up too much. If you are working on URP, you also need to enable it here. But also go to your renderer asset, which will be in your settings folder. This is the PC renderer asset. And then you can enable the screen space ambient occlusion and then change the ambient occlusion however you want. That is how you change it in URP. And finally, indirect intensity and uh, albedo boosts. These are biases. Okay. If your scene feels too dark or too washed out, you can play around with them and it will crank it up a notch. Okay, these are biases. It's not how realistic lighting works. It's just there for giving you more control over things. And then you have light map parameters. We select it. You can see a bunch of different settings for real time GI, baked GI and stuff like that. I recommend keeping it exactly how it is. Unless you are a AAA studio, then you need to research more into what this does. I've never ever had to change this ever. Uh, so I recommend keeping it to default medium or you can click on it, choose different resolutions. That's completely up to you. Next, you have a baking section here. If you choose GPU light mapper, you can pick your GPU here, but you need to start baking first to get this information. Then you will be able to select your GPU device here. Then once you bake again, it's going to be a lot more faster. And then GPU baking profile, set it to automatic. You can bake with a low memory usage. If you're running on low memory, that's completely fine. Let's say you're working on a laptop or something like that. Just to test out how things work, you can do that. Also, you can click on this. And this is where you bake reflection probes or clear bake data of this current scene. Next up is the environment tab. And this is very straightforward. First of all is the skybox material. This is the skybox for the game. If skybox is not visible, you can click on this icon here and then enable or disable skybox. Sun source, you can always assign your main directional light as the sun source. So this one here, if you leave it to none, by default, it will automatically select the most intense directional light. Okay. It is a good habit to set your own sun source, especially if you have three point lighting, which we have discussed on lighting uh, scene with three point lighting to make it look more moody in this video. So you can check it out after this one, if you're interested, then uh, real time shadow color, you can tint real-time shadows here. It's not used often, but uh, it's handy if you want colored shadows. Environment lighting, we can specify a source. Currently, we use the skybox. If you choose a color, you can see that it changes. Now, you can specify a different color and the environment will be lit based on the color. You can also choose a gradient as well if you want to give, you know, like daredevil vibes or something like that. I don't know. I recommend choosing the skybox as, as it will give you natural lighting based on the colors available in the skybox. Environmental reflections, again, you can choose the skybox for the reflections in reflective materials in your 3D meshes. Of course, you can choose a resolution. Higher resolution means higher, better depth. And compression, I recommend setting it to auto. And then you can add biasing, intensity multiplier, and then different bounces as well. And bounces is interesting. By default, it will be set to 1 which means all reflections in the environment will appear black. If you set it to two, then the reflection rays will start bouncing 
reflections will start showing up so if you don't want reflections in your scene set it to one if you do want reflections to show up like an actual mirror then set it to two then finally in the other settings we have fog if we disable fog it looks bad and in some scenes it's great but in this case because it's night time i don't want the player to see a lot of distance so i enable fog i choose this color from the sky box and you can experiment with different fog modes linear is linear you can make it exponential which means it will be higher fog the further away you are exponential squared will be squared of that it's even more thicker at the end and then you can specify the density of the fog it's simple hello settings are mostly used for legacy effects uh, and it's rarely used in modern projects you could use it but it's often better faked than use it here because you want some lights to have the halo effect some lights do not have have the halo effect i recommend faking it through a simple texture or something like that uh this is for spotlights you can change the cookies for the spot spotlights and give it custom shapes so you can have a star shaped light or some stuff like that and that is it for adaptive probe volumes currently the urp asset doesn't support it you can click on open here choose the rp asset and here in the light probe system you can change it to adaptive probe volumes to enable this section this will uh, fill your scene with adaptive probe grids that will capture bounce lighting just like light probes it's much more accurate for larger levels but uh, it's also very heavy so if you're just learning stick with light probes it's so much more easier but know that apv exists for adaptive probe volumes for advanced workflows then we have real-time light maps this will show real-time gi light maps when you bake the scene if a small object is blurry then it probably needs more light map textiles and you can check it out here it's very straightforward and uh, there's nothing to teach here it's just data that you can just look into now let's head over to the project settings i'll close this here you can go to edit project settings you can go to player and other settings and there is color space color space i recommend setting it to linear instead of gamma it will be like that by default linear gives physically based accurate lighting and much better results with hdr textures okay that's what it does gamma is a lot more old school then you have graphics apis let's say you're building for windows you can disable this and then choose which graphics apis you want so graphics api is technically like the language that unity uses to talk to the gpu and of course different apis have different performance platform compatibility directx 3d11 is stable completely stable for windows 3d12 is a much more newer version it has better performance better support for multi-threading but it is sometimes less stable compared to the 3d11 vulcan is a modern api it's designed for higher performance it's especially better for android and uh, linux Th this often gives better cpu utilization opengl core is older it's deprecated there should be something called metal and it will appear if you are using it on mac os or ios i'm using a windows machine so it's not there and we have gle s3 it's a lot more modern you can also use it for android just test it out and check okay just disable auto auto will choose the best but you can customize it okay if your priority is performance sometimes going for the open gl versions will give you a very good boost just as a general rule choose directx 3d for windows i recommend keeping it to 11 because it's a lot more stable choose vulcan or metal if it exists for android you can switch over to open gl es3 if you are you know going for older devices then we have quality settings over here and because we are using urp all of these settings are specified in the asset i can click on it and this is the asset here first of all i recommend looking into shadows this is the distance of how far to render shadows too high would give you a performance hit too low would mean shadows would pop out then you have a shadow resolution for the main light and shadow resolution tiers for low medium and high shadows then you have things called cascades this is based on the distance of the lights this will split the shadow maps for directional lights into regions so uh, the near ones are more crisp while the far ones are softer use at least two cascades for outdoor scenes so closer ones will have better shadows 
farther away ones will have softer shadows then you can enable soft shadows here change the qualities of the soft shadows this would mean better visuals but it is slower then you have a lot of other settings all of these different things in this urp asset that you can also tweak but yeah i can't cover everything it would mean that i am a freak no these are just the basic important ones and yeah it can be confusing at first but once you know where each setting is and with muscle memory this becomes a lot more easier if you want it simple start with linear color space then you use only baked gi for static scenes Keep an eye on the light map resolution and uh, yeah, check volumes and, uh, and have a look on the renderer asset and tweak some properties, play around, have fun. And yeah, that's it for this walkthrough. Each project is different and the only way around is to play around. I've just shown you the important settings and what they do, but it's up to you to play around and test it yourself. Have a good one. Take care. See ya. I love you. Bye.